Greetings, nerds. This is Sane and Nerd. I'm your host, Sarah Belmont, and with me, as always, is our Mr. Producer, Will Paul. How are you doing tonight, Will? Doing well, sir. I hope you're doing well tonight. Looking forward to our discussions about House and the Dragon and the boys. Bring those Emmys on. Yeah, you're you're so excited that we had one <laughs> non-related <laughs> topic, and and I admitted that I didn't watch the Penguin trailer, and you're like, oh, <laughs> okay, <act yep>. out. <laughs> just to go. Chopping, chopping block. Let's just get right to the shows. <laughs> get right to it, my God. I, 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 I mean, you watched it. I didn't watch it, but yeah, I did watch Penguin, it. Yeah, I did. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, just real quick, I did watch it. It's coming in September. Looks great. Colin Farrell is amazing. With chameleon. Uh, I, I was getting some Robert De Niro vibes as far as his Oswald Common Pot, but uh, from the good from um, the Untouchables. But um, but yeah, it, it, it's a it's coming. And uh, we'll, it's been two years, two years since Batman. Yeah, since the Batman. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Um, yeah, and it's and this film, this show is that during that it's right after the events okay. of that film yeah yeah because yeah, yeah. they're still yeah so so there's a power vacuum in gotham which oswald is going to try to fill oh, power vacuums oh my god <laughs> all right so so we will probably be talking about that come September because we do love ourselves some Max shows. So we're going to start off tonight talking about House of Dragon, Episode 2, Renera the Cruel. Both Allison and Renera are facing the consequences of the murder of King Aegon's hair. Um, I think it works best to talk about this show, Teams. Mm-hmm. Yes. <laughs> By yes. team. Yep, so, yep, I agree. So we will just kick off with Team Green. Um, will, what are some of your thoughts about Team Green in this episode? Well, just the ov- initial overall thoughts. Uh, Team Green is, they have a way of s- snatching defeat from the jaws of victory. Because uh, Otto had the best laid plan out there as far as to, as a way to get the people back on their side. And and then Aegon just goes and fucks it all up. Yeah, I I think Aegon's a fascinating character. He is. However, I do have one thing that, despite me liking him this season, mm-hmm. I keep getting reminded of some of the some of his actions from season one, and it goes back to my gripe about the first episode. Like, how much time has passed? Because I don't. I'm still not fully convinced that they didn't do a real parent trap. I mean, they did a parent trap in this episode, but a real parent trap with Aegon. Because I don't feel... Qu- I'm I'm still at a loss as to, like, how the, the Aegon we left became the Aegon in specifically this episode. Mm. <laughs> because, yeah, yeah, he, he was stupid, but at the same time... I completely understand why he did what he did. Like oh, yeah. remove remove the power of it all. Mm-hmm. Um and and I'm glad they inserted the scene where at the end when he's crying and nobody's there to console him. Allison wit- witnesses it, but she doesn't mm-hmm. understand how to be a mom. So she I mean in her eyes these are these are her children, but also she <laughs> She wasn't necessarily the most willing person <laughs> to bear these children, if you know what I mean. Uh, yeah. Like, like I think there, like that has definitely caused her to build up some kind of wall with her with her own children, mm-hmm. and and so to see that at the end, it's just like, even though he makes the wrong decision, in my mind, the wrong decision almost makes him more human yeah. like for him to have not done that i don't know like there would be something inconsistent about his character yeah yeah i mean they really did set up his feelings for for a ja Harris, um with the you know being a doting father you know is bringing him to the council meetings and and those kind of things and i guess it really reflects what he was lacking from his own father in a, in a lot of respects, because you know, by the time 
they did have the the Jaharis, I mean, Aegon, and um, and Amund and the other kids. I mean, Viserys was, was was old. I mean, you know, he had, yeah. you know, so I mean, it, so he didn't, you know, so Aegon didn't have the relationship that Viserys and 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 Rhaenyra had. I mean, he had it, it was a true vacuum, and, and like you said, I mean, Alice Alicent was just not for for from circumstances and other things, just wasn't equipped to to be that i guess nurturing mother because of you know because she was basically having these kids out of duty not out of a sense of like wanting to be you know a mother and 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 do those maternal things yeah yeah it's not necessarily out of love that these kids were born they were born out of need for power Mm -hmm. you know and um it's funny that you bring up his relationship with Viserys just because he he never he he talks about Jaharis as mm-hmm. his he refers to him as his legacy as his hair. Mm-hmm. And that is the one thing that we really got between like that was the lasting breath of his dying father was like name name um Aegon king yeah like like supposedly so so like in his mind he didn't have that relationship that you were talking about with his father but his father wanted him to be king and so i think that's why it was such a great moment to insert that kind of this is my understanding. This is my perspective. It comes mm-hmm. from my father. Like he, he may not have favored me, but he wanted me to be king. And and Otto was like, sure, sure, sure kid. You, you, <laughs> you think that? Um, you think that's what happened? But not necessarily. Like things, like the world is a bit more complex. But you're, you're just like it. It, it makes so then. To have his only male heir die mm-hmm. under his watch and then immediately start hearing from the small council um, th- th- talks about him already appearing as weak. It's like, yeah, of course you're going to get like that isn't the <laughs> the uh, <laughs> the the. Uh, what am what words am I searching for? The pep talk that Aegon needed to hear in that moment for him to actually make rational decisions later. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. You don't already call him weak. That just will make him overcompensate. And oh, yeah. and essentially like like I thought we were done when he killed the one assassin um in cold blood, but no, then later on in the episode he ends up hanging all of the rat catchers. Mm-hmm. Um and so all of the good political chips that Otto was able to secure with the common commoners in King's Landing went out the window because now it's a manhunt and he's making an enemy of those people, which they're also like threading the needle with a good old hue. So. Yeah. 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 I was thinking that too, with, uh, when they were showing the common, you know, Hugh, the, the, the black, I guess he was the blacksmith and, you know, you know, with the, with the scene with his daughter and stuff. And I know, I know some folks are like, well, some of these extra scenes with the common folk, you know, is it really necessary and stuff? But I think it just re, but I think it, yeah, it it reinforces, you know, you know, cause on the, you know, and I love the way they set it up because in the first episode, they, he was trying to be the, Aegon, the, you know, the, um, an elephant, but elephant, uh, the Aegon, the uh, what was magnanimous? I think they were was one of the things. Magnanimous is a word that was used, but I think he yeah. was just like thinking. He was very simple in his logic of how to mm-hmm. rule. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and he's like, he, yeah, and Aldo like shot him down. <laughs> yeah, again, yeah, again, like, yeah. We took your yeah. sheep. Well, we should yeah. give them back. Yeah. We need the sheep for the dragons. Oh, well. Yeah. Okay, I don't know what to do because the, yeah. I mean it, the world isn't. You can simplify things, but there is a whole realm of complexity that you found yourself in that you're not prepared for. So, yeah. Um, 
But yeah, there's something also interesting to know about the the use of and not the use, but bringing in the perspective of not necessarily the commoners, but the the people who are in King's Landing. And and I know um, we have um, I forget his his name, but um, he talks to Adam in the episode. Oh, uh, Alan. Alan, yeah. um, on the other side, who's also like, kind of like, oh great, I have I have the sea snake's favor, but the sea snake is about to head to war. I don't want his favor <laughs> right now. <laughs> like, yeah. like, and and to go since we're talking about Team Green, I mean, it just leads into the the line with um, Amon and the prostitute, where it's like. When a king gets upset, that's when the poor people suffer, like yeah. the little people. And that was such a good line. It's It was a bit, I don't think it was a, I wouldn't put it at the same, like my appreciation for it as um, the Helena and the rats from last week, just because it was so on the nose and there were so many other like, plots going on to support that i was just like okay we're a bit on the nose but at the same time it's very important in terms of this is why we're including some of these subplots because we can't expand the world without being like this civil war is is killing other people or i don't know i'm talking too much but no, 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 that, no. I was thinking that very same thing with with that with that. Um, in, in addition to um, again, just reinforcing a couple things about Amen. Uh, one, just how it was a very telling moment uh, in, in a couple of respects. One, obviously, just the visual of him lying there in a the fetal position, and again, going back to our discussion about Allison and Aegon. Uh, again, just not being able, not having that maternal influence and and person he can confide in. So, uh, so of course he's doing it here. Uh, there's also the, as we just noted, the you know, clear and you know evidence of you know, the common folk are the ones who who are the ones at the end of the day. You all are fighting off on doing your things with your dragons and all that kind of stuff, but we're the ones who end up really suffering because of your. Imp- your impulsive decisions, your need for vengeance, et cetera. But the other, the one thing that did strike me with that scene was uh, sort of the two feelings that he had there. One, he did have remorse for the mistake of, of killing, uh, not Jace, but um, Luceris, Luceris. And, the and then the other thing is just still the pride that he was like whenever he found that that marker coin earlier in the episode showing that damon was the one who ordered to hit and and he just like was still boastful of the fact of the fact that you know, again he's you know he he just loves the fact that damon sees him as a, as a threat and he's and and and, and a worthy enemy and, and how he de- derives uh, pleasure from that Right, right. Something that I wish they they could have touched on, and I kind of under I, I understand why they didn't do this, but um, I don't know. Somebody just point out like the fact that you realize Renera would have no reason to have sent anyone to kill anyone in the castle had Luke not died. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah. And whose fault was that? <laughs> <laughs> so, but yeah. but nobody talked about that. I mean, I I'm not yeah. even sure how many people in King's Landing is aware of Luke's death, considering like the the political propaganda that Otto has been able to wield. Now, exactly. now, on that note, I don't. Otto is not going to be around for much longer because he's going off to to go and hang out with um, Daron, who yeah. we have never. I mean, did we, <laughs> I just I just for people who watch season one, did we ever see a third son from Allison? I just I need to understand. 
Um, I know that he, I, from what I understand, I'm I'm aware that he is in the books, and people mm-hmm. thought like they just were not going to utilize him, but this season they are. So, I just I think that's a bit weird. <laughs> yeah, or I don't know if, or if he, they may just use him as a plot device just for to send Otto to Old Town for now, just to to. Until he gets, you know, until Sir Kristen gets fired and, and, and Otto comes back to be the hand for the third time. Unless, unless Aegon goes for, uh, uh, finally hires, uh, Laris <laughs> Strong. I don't, the, I don't, yeah. I don't think so. I don't think yeah. this is the last we're going to see of Otto. I think we're going to see Old Town. I think we're going to meet the other son, mm-hmm. um, because he is in the books. So yeah, he's in the, yeah, he is in the yeah. books. And yeah, I just, I just didn't know if they were going to hold off that until a season three they might do that they might they might i mean this we're talking about a slow burn winter Mm -hmm. was coming for what eight seven seasons on game of thrones (laughs) (laughs) i know we're gonna get the dance of the dragons in a later episode but um i i don't know if the war will start at the end Mm -hmm. of the season or if we're gonna get the the war to play out at any point in the season yeah yeah true but, true but yeah. and and so to just circle back because i kind of already mentioned the scene but um but really otto is now headed to old town because sir christian with all of his freaking guilt his hypocr- who which he displays just by being the most hypocritical like biggest hypocrite ever in yeah. westeros yeah. He he comes up with a plan to to utilize the knight whose twin brother is currently saving Ren- serving Renera and saying you're gonna go pose as your brother, kill her, and come back a hero. Nothing <laughs> is wrong. Like that is my genius plan. And because Aegon is blinded by grief, I'm gonna tell him that. And he's gonna be like, "You're a freaking genius!" Finally, someone doing some something other than me. I mean, someone's actually doing something, not just talking. Mm-hmm. I'm going to dismiss my grand grandfather and appoint you my my hand. Now, yeah. um, so, now this just makes it more likely that it'll come out that you're fucking my mom. Yeah. 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 Because. Because I swear, if if Amon, everything they are doing with Amon and Aegon, they're building they're they're building me like these two guys. If they cannot mm-hmm. figure out that Sir Christian and Allison are fucking, they lose all credibility. Yeah, yeah, me. yeah, I mean, yeah. Because <laughs> Otto, Otto, surely he, he knows why. He's like, look, don't don't that, that don't need yeah. hear it. That yeah, like, I, just. Yeah, no. Nope. He's like, no. Nope, Whatever your sins nope. are, don't even know. <laughs> no, nope, I already connected. Like, that's it. That's the other thing. Everyone's given Eamon all of this credit because he he picked up a coin and figured out, oh, they were after me. Could you apply the detective work to who murdered your nephew? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and and the why they were not like because come on, dude, you have to figure out soon that sir christian is screwing your mom like come on yeah. and that that's why they were not protected <laughs> yeah exactly there's that plus i think there's that that similar dynamic that he has with with that he has with with damon in that he's he really thinks he should be on the throne and not aegon damon so, yeah Aemon? yeah there is a second son see it's uh, this is when having such a long hiatus works against a show is I don't I, I'm sure there is, but I can't really pinpoint an exact scene where that was really talked about at all. Um, I think it's implied, but I don't know. We honestly, we haven't gotten enough of aim on this season to really know if if he's he's like if he's truly like Damon to that extent. Yeah, right. Actually, yeah. I, I, yeah, that's that's a good point. I mean, it, it, whenever when I was watching the episode too, I was actually thinking that there was 
and then we'll get into it some more here when we talk about Team Black. But the actions in this episode, Damon and Aegon had more similarities as far as their impulsiveness and their need for vengeance and those kind of things seem to be more mirrors of one one another as far as some of their their temperaments than than than, than Aegon this week. Yeah, yeah. Or or you mean Aemon this week? Yeah, Aemon. Yeah. I mean, we got one scene of arguably one and a half scenes. We yeah. didn't really get a lot of him. And and I found I, I, I think that's because we're going to get a big scene between him and Damon at some point this season. Yeah. And that's going to yeah. be yeah. like the big thing. And yeah. and I think they really want us to separate these brothers as independent mm-hmm. characters and really make sure like the viewers see them as individuals and see like they're um that they're on kind of their own paths at the same time they're not completely yeah. joined at the at the hip but mm-hmm. um yeah so we talked about that yeah i i'm at least glad that like I I feel like everything I said bad about Sir Christian last week was just like, yes, yeah. Everyone is on the same page now. Sir Christian is the ultimate villain of House of Dragon. <laughs> <laughs> he is. And just when you think this guy can get out any any more hateable, he he just like takes it to a ne- ne- next level. I mean, which is the, so weird yeah. when we're talking about a show where like literally what a six year old just got his head cut off. Mm-hmm. And then, and then what I, an 11 year old got, or what feels like a 15 year old maybe got thrown off a dragon and eaten alive and all of that. Mm-hmm. And yet it's no, 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 it's Sir Christian. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he's just, he's just a bad guy for having sex with people, but also he, his, his whole, like, yeah, yeah. He's just yeah. a bad boy. It's just, yeah, he's just. Guy. Just a petty, yeah, just just a petty, bitter man who just can't get over it just because she didn't want to go running off to the net, you know, to the faraway lands, and he just can't get over it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and and now he he's screwing the the king's mother, and yeah. he left the the children unprotected, and one of them died, and it's just yeah. like, oh, like dude, yeah. dude, yeah. Uh, dude. And then, and then, yeah, um, it projects but his guilt on, yeah, and it projects the guilt, you know, just like, you know, so whenever he was messing with Arik there in the, in, in the dining hall and, and just projecting the guilt, you know, some people, like, I guess, internalize things and he was just like projection, projection, like, dude, you're just like, you're putting the target on your back as far as like letting everyone know. I mean, Helena is at some point is going to like, if, if the brothers don't figure it out, Helena will spread the word that what she saw that night. So, um, and then that was another thing too, Alicent, uh, you know, she, you know, she's feeling all guilty and, you know, the gods are punishing her and stuff. But at the same time, she's trying to do her own CYA whenever they were planning a funeral procession. And then she's like talking to Helena about like, you know, you know, what, as far as what, what she saw and stuff that night and, and trying to like, you know, do damage control so and protect and to protect her own, her own ass so it's just like man you know again like you were saying we have young two young kids did and then everybody's just you know at least on team green and i think that's was why i'm just like still like they even though team black has done some bad stuff it just feels like team green has done worse <laughs> yeah yeah well it all goes back to the first season and how that yeah. played out and the clear side that the writers seem to have been on, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> where, yeah. <laughs> which, I, which isn't a bad thing because it's very hard to have such a big ensemble where people yeah. are like clearly torn, yeah. but I, I really don't yeah. feel like anyone's too torn right now. Yeah. Um, so, so since we ended off talking about Eric, um, we what what were your thoughts about the ending where Eric goes to try to kill Renera? Mm-hmm. Um, then his brother's notified of his presence. He comes in. They duel. 
one dies and and it and from what i understand the one who was sent from king's landing ends up surviving and then kills himself because he can't live with the fact that he just killed his brother yeah i mean honestly the way that scene ended i i i'm still not sure i mean i've heard that thought and but i could easily make the argument that in either case, it was the the result was going to be the same. Whichever brother won that, right? right? Yeah, right. Uh, yeah, um, and, and you know, last season when we were introduced to them, mm-hmm. it only makes sense for it to have ended this way for them. Mm-hmm. Like, like, what do you think was going to happen? Literally, you have a the house of. Targaryen who are at odds with one another one twin brother goes on one side the other on the other you really think you both will survive <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> exactly exactly but it gets back to the point we were discussing earlier which is the even though they have full blown war hasn't happened i mean again it just set, it reminds us as the viewer what the stakes are here and who are the people are and, and and yes, the, the the larger royal families have their will have their losses and stuff. But at the end of the day, it's the it's the it's the it's the foot soldiers, it's the common people who are going to pay the ultimate, you know, the big a a, a big price for all this politicking among the family. Yes and no, like, and I say yes and no because on one level, yes, it mm-hmm. it kind of like drives that point home but at the other time at the other um level because we're talking about two twin brothers Mm -hmm. two brothers who are on opposite sides of this war that forces them to have their own civil war too among Mm -hmm. each other yeah and and so it's like for for this duel it's it symbolizes like, yes, like people who are not part of the family get involved, but also the, the, the family themselves, like, like, I think there's a line, like there's no, <clears throat> no worse war than the war between kin, like, yeah. because blood bleeds blood. And, and honestly, the royal families are the Targaryens are the ones who are currently have the most losses on both sides because we got sure. a kid dead on one side and the kid dead on the other side. Yeah. So, so yes, we see in King's Landing that the people are suffering because they're they're not um, receiving much support as um, as Team Green heads to war, but. Mm-hmm. And then on the other side with Alan and the sea snake, we're just seeing like it's hard to galvanize troops because they know how bloody this thing will be, especially when both sides have dragons. Right. right. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. And like, I was, uh, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. No, I was going to say, I'm glad you brought up Alan and Adam again because, you know, Adam is very eager to get into this, but Alan is sort of like, well, uh, you know, to that point, both sides have dragons. And, and, you know, he's seen some, you know, he, you know, he rescued Corliss. So he's seen yeah. some stuff. So, you know, he, he, he's like, I know what's, what, the, what the game is here and don't be so eager to get into this. Right, right, right. Because once you, you're <laughs> the, the dragons, <laughs> they're weapons, but they're arguably more, more deadly than any other weapon because they're yeah. an animal. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like it's hard to be controlled. <laughs> yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you got like you know, you have flying atom bombs basically. Right. Um, right. And um, yeah, but uh, but also the other thing too, as we were talking about the brothers, I, I, I really this episode also you had situations where people were questioning their loyalties, mm-hmm. um, and you know, with Cole question RX loyalty, and you know, and just trying to basically, and 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 it, it seems you know, and it. But it was diff- it was different in the way they were questioning it. You know, Coles was because of the failings that he had as far as not protecting the kids that night. As far as Christian, you know, his guilt of being with Alice a bed, <laughs> a bed. <laughs> you know, I love that with that scene, but uh, with that Aegon. But then whenever you're over in Dragonstone with with Ren- with uh, Eric, and when they were questioning him, 
Uh, you know, he, you know, I like the way he we went back. He's like, look, who was the one who like brought the king? You know, brought the crown. <laughs> you know, right. I'm, I'm with you, and 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 so and, and of course when I guess uh, the uh, young lady, you know, saw him or saw Arik walking up the hill. I mean, I guess it's implied that you know she went back because of what Renera did for her as far as honoring Damon's word. Um, you know, tipped tipped them off as far as what was going on there. So, yeah, yeah. Um, the other scene that I want to talk about um, on Team Black is, of course, the uh, Damon and Renera showdown. Yeah, <laughs> it's one of the few times when I actually was yelling at my TV. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, oh snap. <laughs> oh that yeah. one because it was it was such a good verbal spar. Such a good verbal spar that we have been missing. Mm -hmm. Um and I I kind of wish the tension was built up a little bit more. Um because that felt like an end of the End of the episode, Damon goes off, but no, there's more. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, um, but at the same time, it just it it was so good because it was it went to very unexpected places. Like mm -hmm. you knew she was gonna be mad. You knew that Damon would not be like hold any accountability for the fact that he killed his I don't even know how to define his relationship with Jared. <laughs> it's Ken Folk. Yeah, Ken Slayer. Yeah, that's all you can yeah. say. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But but for that to then transcend into them as a couple, as a married couple, mm -hmm. and the fact that he's doing this in her name, well like, oh, we know that you've wanted the power. So, oh, so good. So yeah. good. It was, yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, I, you know, the play, by, as I joked at the beginning, when we started recording, hand out the Emmys. <laughs> this, this scene is definitely one you'll see for, for Matt Smith and, and Emma Darcy on, on their for your consideration reels because it, and this and we're only two episodes in so no you know who else who knows what else we're going to get this year from them, but uh, they just they just play so well off of one another as far as as far as the acting but then just looking at the dialogue and you know when you were talking about the tension so to me the tension got really set up when they were in in the in the council room there oh yeah uh, uh, when you know when one of the other uh, members of the council was questioning um you know whatever Renero was like you know who, who how can how how where did where did, why are they blaming me for this essentially and and he's like well you know and then i love how renice was like well watch your tongue son watch your tongue but also whenever that scene played out too was just the looks that you know damon whatever renice gave to damon and then Renero gave to damon this this everything about it was just it just set that set that intimate fight that moment when they were in the room together alone it just set it up so so perfectly and then just the the the, the just thinking back to the um season one whenever you know when, when it out when renera talks about you know whenever she was a child how she sees things and whatever you know i think back to the episode where they were just having a night out on the town and 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 but then to bring up the, the lack of trust that Viserys had for for Damon and 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 now she can't trust him and and of course Damon always feeling slighted which again Renice felt slighted and I love the way they like jumped to that scene with Corliss and and Renice talking about you know her situation she's you know she's she has just this equal claim to the you know she's forgotten she's the forgotten queen so it's just really just with Team Black it's just. It, it, even though it seems things are focusing dynamically more as far as the King's Landing and some of the larger things with with the town, with Team Green, whenever Team Black is on the screen, it just feels like they, they, it just seems to have more dynamic stuff to work with, with their with their dynamics within their relationships and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I mean both sides do. Don't get me wrong, but right. yeah, but uh, it was just something about this week that just really, really popped. 
and then also just you know with with Renera, uh, whenever she was talking to Damon's old uh, paramour, mm-hmm. and um, and really you know really showing the, the different styles if she were if she were on the throne juxtaposing that again with with Aegon and and and, and how the lessons she learned from the good lessons she learned from Viserys as far as how to how to treat how to treat folks uh versus how, how Aegon does well Aegon tried <laughs> yeah he tries yeah he tried he tried yeah. but Aegon this is a little stumbling so block called Otto Hightower so but <laughs> recently so <laughs> <laughs> can, we, can we not villainize Aegon quite yet? <laughs> like, no, no. I, actually, he, he I, this week I was actually I was rooting for it, and in, in a weird way, I was kind of rooting know, for Aegon. <laughs> right, right. Like, come yeah. on now. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Even though he treats, even though he treats Selena kind of like, you know, that's another relationship. This oh, is yeah. sort of like, yeah. I'm also like putting Aegon season one on the shelf and being like Aegon season two. Like when I say yeah. I root for Aegon, I'm talking about season two. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Yes, one. yes. <laughs> okay. Got it. Good. For sure. For sure. <laughs> all right. Well. All right, that is it for House of Dragon, and that brings us to The Boys. Episode 3, we'll keep the red flag flying here. The problems have started between Homelander and Starlight supporters. Huey tries to figure out what's going on between Homelander and Victoria Newman. Um, it, it's going to be hard this week because, honestly... It's just like, let's skip to episode four because everything happens in episode four. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I yeah, mean, sure. they like, I'm glad we watched these two episodes back to back because mm-hmm. arguably all of the stuff that starts in, se- in episode three kind of comes to a, a conclusion in the fourth episode, um, including... The fact that Mother's Milk gets this idea to flip a train, yeah. Um, and uh, what else happens in here? Um, we get the story behind Annie and Firecracker. Why they're um, why the animus is there uh, as far as uh, yeah, they were so much. predators. Yeah, yeah. Um, we get that, which. And and Annie spread a rumor and said mm-hmm. a mean thing. And yep. then we find out later that Fire fra- Cracker literally fucked a 15-year-old. So, I yep. mean... Don't be far off. <laughs> the moment I want to commit, like, I don't know. How, and she was also, like, Starlight was, like, what, 13 when this all happened? So, yeah, yeah. girls are yeah. mean at that age. Get yes. over it. <laughs> yeah, mean girls. I mean, I guess... I guess, yeah, they were, you know, yeah, people bully one another, you know, and people change, you know, but I guess they were trying to like, yeah, you know, again, just showing the, I guess, pettiness of, of, of Firecracker. I don't know what, I can't remember what her, her, her real name is, but, uh, but yeah, there, you know, there was that. And, and then of course the, uh, you know, the thing that, you know, the ongoing issues with Hue- Huey and, wanting to uh you know th- with his father and the um you know you know the coma and stuff and wanted to get the get the v to help him um i am I think so was, over that storyline by the way i'm so over huey and the father and the mom yeah i mean it i mean i, I it's for me it's just sort of like it's an interesting story. I get where they're coming from. I think when Huey, you know, whenever Huey and Mother's Milk were there in the ice rink and, and seeing the, the performance, it was like, okay, good. I'm glad Huey's back into back into action. Um, because oh, yeah. We needed that whole sequence. We needed that, because yeah. We needed to see the seven on ice mm-hmm. and in a literal bloodbath because Homelander figures out that Huey is eavesdropping on him and Newman, where Sage basically tells Newman, you're going to be become president. We're going to do that for you. And then you're going to let soups rule all of the world. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Including a soup for every city free range over the police. Okay. Make that happen. 
and then and then just it honestly there there's a lot of killing on the show but this sequence had one of my favorite kills ever just because the fact that homelander is trying to laser the the pipes that Huey is in and he 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 misses a shot and ends up literally slicing a figure skater <laughs> diagonal. It was just so yeah. funny. Wow. Yeah. 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 Wow. That is for crazy. sure. For sure. Yeah. And it's just even more so like with we have the, the Christmas soundtrack song that they yeah, had in yeah, the background yeah. playing too. Yeah. It was just like how yeah, I'm like that okay. Has not ended the way it did. That whole thing. How did how did you well, you knew you were going to get important information, so you're totally glued in and then you mm-hmm. almost forget about the the figure skating and then while Huey's making the escape, you're like, "Oh god." Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> not the figure skating. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Yeah. But yeah, but you know, to your point about A Train and you know and uh Mother's Milk and trying to flip them. So I don't know. I think I like the way they cut way they did that as far as in this episode in, in the sense that he you know, he goes when they're having a back and forth and and, and all, I think Mother's Milk was put the seed in, in it in there and then they and they carried it forward when when mother when A Train actually saved Huey there from from homelander yeah. there at the end so I, I did like it it was more like we're not gonna we're you know we're i'm not gonna just explicitly have you flip you know and of course there's always the, the usual boys threat that you know we have all this dirt on you but at the end of the day i think he just wanted he wanted he, he, he he's trying to get a train to to willingly like help not just oh, but know, he's been, help. Yeah. he's been wanting to get out for a while now he's yeah, just yeah. needed reason and yeah and some sort of protection because, I mean, he knows what mm-hmm. happens when people try to leave. Yeah, um, yeah. It's, it's very hard. I mean, the fact that Annie's still alive is amazing. Yeah. Um, and then yeah. the... Uh, no, the, I, I want to definitely talk about uh, The Deep. Oh, yes. Deep yeah. and, also, we, we have... and also Butcher and Ryan. Yeah, I want to talk about that one. Oh, yeah. okay. We can talk about Butcher and Ryder and Ryan first. Okay, yeah, just real quick. I, I guess the question that I have more, you know, there was the dynamics going on there in the story and every, all the cookies and, and you know, clearly doing the juxtaposition as far as Butcher and Homelander. But the thing I was more, because I'm, I'm wondering is Kessler. And I think you may have mentioned it last week um, or, and whether or not, is this, is Butcher, is this one of Butch, you know, we, we know we have the Becca hallucinations. Is is Kessler real or is he in Butcher's head? I just wanted you to get that your thoughts. That is amazing. If if Kess if Kessler is a hallucination, um, I applaud the writers. Mm. And now if Hess- Kessler is not a hallucination, I'm gonna be pissed. <laughs> <laughs> because just, yeah. in thinking about it, the only times we see these two people interact, no mm. one else is around. Mm. There's no other character has interacted or there's been no mention of Kessler up until the first episode of the season. Right. So he just came out of the blue. Yeah. And, and I mean, the stuff with Becca, <laughs> I get why they're doing it. Yeah. It's also just a little like, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, but, but to then have like, that would be amazing. I don't mm. know. I think that there, again, like I would love it to be that way, but I'm also, I'm just, I'm not sure. I, I, I'm not sure if that's the rabbit that the writers are going to pull out um, of the hat. I'm not, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I think that would be very cool. Yeah. Yeah. I just, just put that out there as far as just, just a thought. Um, because, you know, this is the good angel about, you know, the, the devil and the good angel, you know, we got Becca and all, you know, and the change of heart that Butcher has in that scene as far as after talking with Ryan. So, well, but, yeah. Uh, or, or, yeah, yeah. Or but, it could just be he just just really wants to do right by the kid. Yeah. But I also just um, if if you're going with the angel devil on the shoulder type deal, man, the angel does not get a lot 
to say because Kessler has all these lines and Becca hardly says anything in the scene. Yeah. She just looks at him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and just makes your, one of <laughs> words. Like, I'm like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Meanwhile, like, he, he meets up with Kessler. They have full conversations. Yeah. All yeah. of this other stuff. <laughs> so, um, all right. Yeah, but deep. yeah, yeah, the, 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 the hookup I never saw coming yeah. <laughs> happens in the, at the end of this episode. And then they just, just, just when you think it could, I just love this when the boys writers do this, but it's like, mm-hmm. yeah, the deep is going to be pissed about, about Sage because Sage kicks him off of his unit and then the deep gets um, offered fast food, essentially, yeah. and and sex. And suddenly it's like, yes, That's I'm right. in love with you. Yeah. Um, and then they, and then you're just like, this is so cringe. And then you just pan down, and there's a bloody, like, needle object, and you're like, what the fuck? What is this? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> what yeah. The fuck? Oh my god. But yeah, yeah. and I I did not know what it was. I did not know what I was just like, what is that? Yeah, um, yeah, I, I was I was clueless as well. Yeah, yeah. I would have never and then in the next episode we find out what it is, and it's the fact that yes, Sage's superpower is that she is the smartest person ever. But her brain like will always regenerate. So she has been giving herself self lobotomies to mm-hmm. free herself from being her for a few hours. She'll all, it'll always regenerate back. And so, but she did that, like, I don't know how long before the deep entered into her room in last episode. And that's why, like, it makes more sense now because it, it seemed like she was stoned or something was wrong. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she wasn't, she wasn't the same thing, but, but it's also just like, yeah, yeah. For, for you to actually find, well, not to find, but for you to actually want to sleep with, uh, someone who has sex with octopuses. Yeah. You would have to give yourself a lobotomy. Yeah. yeah that would make yeah. sense. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. did set. It, yeah, they totally, totally. You, yeah, totally did. And you're right. I mean, they they said it because uh, I was something. There was something off because she was like watching trash TV. So I was like, "Where is this? You know, where is this coming from?" But yeah, whenever we, you know, I guess we could really turn to episode four um, and just continue on on with Sage. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, when they, when they they do that, and I I will freely admit, that, you know. I think this was really the first time I've actually like I couldn't watch that scene. I, I, I just couldn't. I just yeah. Whenever they stuck that eye the thing in her eye, I was like, nope, I am done. I just just tell me when it's over. But yeah. it makes sense it, as far as you know, because she's like, look, you, you know, shoot me in the heart, whatever, I'm dead. But you know, but this damn brain of mine just regenerates, and I got to do this. And um, and it was just you know, it, but also like you know when we. We 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 learn why they, she does it, but then whenever we when we first see them in in the episode and, and Deep is like you know w- goes up to her in the seven council meeting and you know she's back you know she's no, in her normal state and you know it's like trying to like make moves on her and stuff and she's like get the get get away from me I'm disgusted by you and, and it was just like makes sense too <laughs> I mean that's what she, that's how she should react <laughs> right. Yeah. 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 It's um it was a lot. I watched the full thing. <laughs> yeah. I, I, yeah. I watched I the just, full thing. So, things I, going I, eyes. I just I can't had different <laughs> issues in this episode with scenes where I was like, I don't know if I can watch this. Um yeah. I was also a little bit distracted during some of the some of the the scenes, but we'll definitely get to Homelander. But this this episode is constructed in um in in a different way in the sense you have homelander removed which again mm-hmm. we'll get to him yeah. um but most of the episode occurs as firecracker starts her own show on vnn 
um, which is to t- and and starts to promote this whole agenda to take down Annie and the Starlighters. Yeah. Um, and and so it's the boys trying to figure out how to prevent that from happening, um, which they they pretty much fail to do. And um, Firecracker reveals that Annie had an abortion, mm-hmm. um, and which which is way worse than the fact that the boys do end up revealing, and then Fire Firecracker acknowledges on live television that she slept with a fifteen year old. <laughs> yeah, and then folks herself in religion because that's what these truth right. truth yeah these these right. crazy QAnon you know people do. Yeah. Yeah, 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 but it's the the person who aborted the kid. Is <laughs> she's the real problem, and then that that leads to Annie um, just being blinded by it. pulling an egg on. She pulled a full egg on. Well, not a full egg on. She didn't kill Firecracker, but she pretty much beat her beat her close to death on live yeah. national television. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that scene was out, you know, talk about hard things. I think when 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 Starlight's uh, medical records were were broadcast like that out there, I just felt, you know, Annie's been violated so many times in the show. And, you know, when we think back to the first season with Deep, you know, um and this this super invasion of her privacy and stuff. I mean, I you know, if I were in her shoes, I would have I would have done the same thing, but you know, I guess the whole you know, I guess the whole Sage's whole point, master plan uh, that um, she you know that she that she has concocted and why she recruited Firecracker to the to the seven to begin with because clearly from just general merit she doesn't have any, <laughs> um, and and I love you know I was I was kind of like too with with the Sage whenever she was like uppity. <laughs> He was up right. being now cracker. Yeah, I mean that was a great line because you know, especially whenever we had the, whenever we had the scene earlier where she was just like, you know, oh, you're one of the good ones. I was like, uh, God, I've heard that before, and it just like, it, yeah, that does that one always touches a nerve. Don't ever say that to an African American person, people. You're one, you're <laughs> one of the good ones. Just, just don't. As we, <laughs> Oh. I've had that I've had that said to me before and it was from someone I had and I quickly corrected them uh when they said that to me. <laughs> oh yeah. 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 I didn't yeah, I didn't throw hands, but you know, uh, you know. The oh. microaggressions <laughs> yeah. that yeah. Us, us white people don't yeah. don't recognize it's Yeah. Yeah. It's, and that's what's so yeah. 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 That's what's so genius about this show too. I mean, it just like pulls all those things up that you're right. Yeah. The microaggressions are definitely like, I'm glad they, I'm glad they put put that in. That did not end up on the cutting room floor. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I'm also glad that they, they let Annie get to that point. Mm -hmm. Um, because she's, she's made it a point. She's no longer starlight. She, she associates that with a lot of bad stuff. And, and, in a way, she she was not wearing the suit when right. she did this. She was clearly Annie mm-hmm. acting out of anger, mm-hmm. a very human human trait, yeah. and using her power. And honestly, the whole time I was also thinking to myself, if I was a viewer watching this, I would be like, so Annie was on the seven left seven and they replaced her with firecracker firecracker literally had no defense yeah <laughs> like why is she on the seven right yeah <laughs> exactly how how can we expect firecracker to save us when she just like there was there was nothing yeah. <laughs> like she couldn't do a thing it's horrible yeah um, so makes but, makes those make those sparkles in her with you know with her hand with her fingers. Right, right. I didn't, but I didn't even see no sparkles. It was yeah. horrible. It was it was it was like bad. Yeah. Um. So so we have that play out. Um. Meanwhile, we have okay. This is a great. Mm-hmm. What did I miss a scene? At what point did Mother's Milk suddenly say, "Hey, Butch, you you can come back." Yeah, I yeah, I was I was equally like, wait a minute. Now, when yeah. we left off on episode three or whenever, they were like, he, "You're not welcome here." 
Yeah, yeah, we watched these two episodes back to back. You were pretty consistent, like firm on your stance about Butcher in the third episode. And now he's suddenly out of nowhere. No, no, we need him. Yeah. <laughs> we need him. Yeah. <laughs> And 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 he learns about Huey's situation more, and also the links as Huey has A Train get him a vial of vault of V mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. to give to his father, and um, and we we have some nice moments. I just I don't know. I I I I know where they're going. It's just that with everything else. The show has such a great ensemble to its detriment mm-hmm. because it's it's re- they have they have so many other things going on that you just have to be like prioritizing your favorite characters, your like plot threads that you actually are feel invested to, and everything else. You're just like, okay, I'll just I'm just gonna let it play out. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like the whole Kamiko and Frenchie thing. I love Frenchie and Kamiko, but I ha- I'm very confused as to how their relationship ended to where they are now. And also they're kind of on their separate journeys, but they're also still very much connected at the hip. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> very I heard a, yeah. I heard a great, like, uh, I just, actually this evening I was uh, I was at the gym for this before recording with you tonight. Uh, I came across a video of someone breaking down uh, a video about say why Sage works and why Frenchie and Colin doesn't work, mm-hmm. and essentially it was you know, basic. Basically, Sage has a purpose in this story to drive drive the narrative forward, whereas Colin is just basically there for melodrama. <laughs> And it's not getting, it's not based, not getting us invest. No, you know, it doesn't invest. Melodrama doesn't invest us. It feels very CW. <laughs> and, yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah. I mean, also Sage's whole involvement is being involved with Homelander. Homelander. Exactly. So, exactly. So, I mean, of course she's going to work more. <laughs> yeah, no, but, but. I mean, it, whether it's Sage or, I mean, like Annie and Firecracker. I mean, there's, you know, again, it's like they're driving character development and character depth with these, with the, with their story, you know, these new supporting characters right. bring the story right. forward. Whereas Frenchie, it doesn't tell us anything new. I mean, yes, there we go. I yeah. get that. Yeah. 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 Um, and, and to wrap up, uh, almost the, the boy side of things, uh, a train does get get the vial, and yeah. and Huey and A train actually have a nice moment in this episode yeah. because they yeah. always have to remind us that this whole thing kicked off because A train killed Huey's girlfriend, not mm-hmm. Annie, mm-hmm. but Huey's girlfriend yep. <laughs> in broad daylight. <laughs> yep, yep. yep. Um, so, but but I I feel like they've resolved that. So hopefully, I mean, I know we're getting into season five, but hopefully that isn't brought up again. Um, no, and, I think that, yeah, I think that story has re- resolved itself pretty yeah, clearly. Yeah. yeah. Hopefully. And, um, and then Huey goes and now correct me if I'm wrong. He mm-hmm. did not, he did not give the vial to his dad. So he did at least that's my under. That's how it played out yeah, in, my, in front of my out. eyes. That, yeah. Now, Cause he put it, he put it in his jacket. He left the room. He comes back and then. There's yeah. Luke. yeah, because yep. don't forget it. his mom, you like worked or used to either used to work or works for her fault. You still, I think she still works with them. Yeah. 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 So she, so the implication is she had a vial and felt guilty. And so she, she, she did it. For, yeah. Or, for yeah. Or she stood back there, kind of at the door, saw you put in his jacket pocket, and because he took his jacket off and left it there on the chair. Oh, okay, I get it. Okay, okay, yeah. that that would make sense too. Yeah. I still, I, I kind of wish they would have done the not had that, yeah. mm-hmm. um, but so, because they saw, did in that seed that she, but but I I get it. Yeah, that makes sense yeah. too. Either way, yeah. it wasn't Huey. Yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, I've seen some theories out there. People have, that people think that it, that it is that again, like we were. Well, was the question I posed to you about Kessler, people are putting that question out there about Huey's mom because uh, she doesn't really interact with other people, even though the doctor was in the room whenever they said he was. You know, he they, oh, yeah. when they pulled the plug. But they, they can't uh, have two imaginary friends. Exactly. Yeah. But you know, but he we did take. He we did take B, so I mean it yeah. would be a side effect. So yeah, there, there's there's a maybe that's where my like kind of like I'm not feeling Huey this season is coming from. Yeah. It's like where is his side effects? Because I yeah. feel like I watched a season where there were two people on the team taking B, but yeah, yeah. what do I know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, the way I take it, and I don't think they would do both of the both butcher and Huey have an imaginary friends. I mean, that's just, that's a lot. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Uh, there's, there's, yeah, I could see it if they were like doing it for, uh, you know, just to, because he was just feeling so distraught that this is sort of his way of way of like constructing someone to, to take the guilt. Yeah. 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 All right. Well, so, that brings us to oh, before we, that, yeah, oh but before we get to Homelander, I just had to say I, I, I did have a just a, just a moment just to recognize when they had the Godalkin four. Uh, they did keep chance in mm-hmm. the screen. They didn't edit them out, and I just wanted to make made a note, made a note of that. Um, I just yep. you know we, we we did we're still seeing the Gen V folks uh, showing up in the show. So yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'm just waiting for the virus to come up because that was part yeah. of the promos. And I'm like, yeah, don't well, tell me that's towards the end because I yeah. thought this whole season would be about do we do that or do we not? Because right. they are doing a good job about setting up the fact that there are both good and bad guys mm-hmm. on Team Soups, if you yeah. really think about it. So yeah. if you release that virus, it, it doesn't discriminate. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you're a good exactly. soup. You're a bad soup. No, no, it'll kill them all. Uh, all right. Yeah. So, so th- this, I watched this over the weekend. Um, I know Will watched both episodes before me, but but Will did either tweet or I'm pretty sure he tweeted this, but he, he's he's definitely ready for Anthony Starr to get a uh, Emmy. Yeah, <laughs> and and I I don't think I'd watch this episode, but I I saw a thumbnail on IMDb, and I'm like, oh okay, I know where this is headed. <laughs> <laughs> well, we yeah, yeah yeah yeah. Well, with the third episode, with the you know we didn't, that's the one thing we didn't talk about with Homelander in episode three with the uh, the shattered mirror after he and Ryan had the fallen out. They set it. They set this. They set that up pretty well. Where where things were going. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was going home yep. because going back to where it all began will help him figure out and get over his undying need to be loved. Mm-hmm. Right. And so so he shows up home in the laboratory that that uh, raised him. Mm-hmm. Um, we find out why they raised him, too. Uh, yeah. With a fudgy whale, and and it just, it just, uh, it doesn't get any better. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> just, there's so much. Now, here's here's my gripe. Yeah. Here's my gripe. There's so much tension mm-hmm. in that whole sequence. It should have been um, the whole cold open, everything that happened there. You did not need to jump back and forth with, with, which, with everything else that was happening. Because, mm. granted, it's a lot. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, it bothered me how much jumping back and forth w- was occurring. Because I'm just like, I'm just like, oh, he's killing, he killed one person. And then we cut and leave him for like 10 minutes. And then we're back. And it's just like, oh. Okay, yeah. we're, we're gonna kill another, and it's just like it's just like no. I mean, I just, I just would have really liked that to play out. You knew where it was headed, so I, mm-hmm. I think it also arguably because there was so much back and forth. Some of the sequences went on a bit longer than they should have, mm-hmm. but 
I just think it would have hit me personally a lot harder had it been one intense, long, cold open. Like, who cares if it goes to the 30-minute marker? You, you, you end it with him in the elevator, bloody face, and then you hit the boys, and then we watch the rest of the episode. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, yeah. meanwhile... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I I could see that. Um, I, I see where you're, where you're coming from with that, but I, I actually I like the way that it played out because, if calls apparently, I guess with the way it was scripted versus how it ended up being, uh, Kripke it had it even more intense and over. He just came in like guns blazing, uh, but uh, Anthony Starr was like, no, no, let's 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 soften it a bit. Start you know soften him up with the with the ice cream cake and just go go from there. Yeah, and I think that, and I think that worked better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I I agree with that. I'm not. Yeah. I don't think yeah. he should have gone and guns blazing or anything. I I can. It it wouldn't have made sense to me if he did, because yeah. that's not what Homelander does. Yeah. Homelander, he doesn't just want to kill you. He wants to torture you first. Yeah. Like he knows he has the power. He yeah. knows you know. He can kill you at any minute. And so he just wants to like put you on a little string and just dangle you for a bit. And, and see, that's why it worked for me with them breaking it up because they build it. Because I think if it, it, it that would have been a lot to sustain for a extended sequence. Yeah. If it were so breaking it up and going to other parts of the story and then coming back to me was just like, it, it helped, you know, you were, each time it just ratcheted the tension up more. And okay. then when he finally, you know, when he, when he did the action, the first one with Frank and, and putting him in the oven, you know, it, it had the right shot value for me at that point. So for me, it, for me, as, as the way it was edited, it, it worked fine, but I, I totally get what you're saying. I mean, I think, you're, yeah. You're, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I like Frank, the barber stuff was great because mom comes home Mm -hmm. Um, and like he, we, we know Homelander has dad issues. We also learn why we'll never meet the mom because he killed the mom when he was mm -hmm. born. Yeah. Um, baby. Okay. The baby has powers. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> of course, what do you expect to gonna have then? The mom, the doctors, yeah. the nurses. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and, um, I just, the, I, I, I will admit. I I'd completely checked out during the Marty stuff. Yeah. Like the setup, I, I watched the, but as soon as he's just like jerk off in front of all these people and everything, I was like, uh, I'm in bathroom. Okay. I don't need to watch this. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah, well, like yeah. that's the part where I was like, Oh, like I under, I understand why. Mm -hmm. And this is the boys. This is the type of stuff you're going to expect. It just, it just made it, I don't know. There was it just was, something about it that I was just like, mm, it I, was, don't, it, I don't know. Yeah. It was like watching a snuff film. I mean, it was, I mean, it was in a sense, it was a sexual assault against Marty. I mean, and, 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 and the torture that the homeland inflicted there. I mean, it was, it was just very, it was, it was very hard to watch for me too. Um, yeah. Well, I don't, I guess it's hard for me. I, I don't know if I'm articulating this correctly. It's not that it was hard for me to watch. Um, it's that I just, it, I, there's something about it where I was just like, okay, this is, it just, it didn't, I don't know. I don't know. The, 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 I guess, yeah. I mean, the, I guess the, the cruel, I mean, I guess the cruelty of it, I mean, it was, I don't know. I, I, it was just, I mean, it, I mean, as far as the scene, however things sort of went out, I mean, on the one hand, I, I here's, here, you if know, it, it, if it works for you, it's, it's fine. I, no, 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 no okay. yeah, no, it was more just a whole, not only Marty, but just a whole, like Frank, everything about it. I mean, I think it was sort of like. There were, you know, we, we talked about this before with Anthony Starr and, and how he portrays his character. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and you rationally, you, you just want to despise this man. But at the same time, there were, I was, there were moments, whatever, as he was talking about what they did to him as a child, I was feeling sympathetic for Homelander. 
Well, right, because you're reminded yeah. about yeah. like yeah. he he never experienced that, and and the most fascinating revelation to come out of this was what Barbara said yeah. and explained is that you're here because. <laughs> We, because during all of that, we made sure to instill in you a need mm -hmm. to be loved that yeah. you can't overcome mentally. Because even though he's all happy, like he killed all these people and left Barbara in the bad room with all of their dead bodies. It, what he doesn't realize is like, dude, you're still, you're still you. Yeah. So, so I don't, I don't know if that's going to be gone and you still have a son who yeah, you yeah. want to be loved by him. So yeah. good luck. Yeah. And, and he didn't kill Barbara because again, uh, I think he, that need for love. I mean, and, 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 and to, uh, approval, no, but he, he didn't kill Barbara because it, that would have been too easy of a death for her. He yeah. wanted her to stay in that room. Like, yeah. like for all he knows, Barbara's likely to die in that room surrounded by all of those people. Like. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, she may be just the guilt may take that. Yeah. But I don't know. I don't, I didn't get that sense from her. I mean, she, she reminded, you know, cause she was also there with Stan and the, the Stan Egger and the other, uh, the, the founder of bought. So, I, I don't know. I, I I I think it was you know again he is is his way of just inflicting more torture and pain on people. Right, right. That that's what I was trying to explain. I I, yeah. I the guilt stuff. I I agree. I yeah. don't think there's yeah. necessarily there. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Yeah, but um, but yeah. I mean, it was a super. It was it was a, it was a very chilling moment. Um and. Um, you know, wh where do we go next? <laughs> I mean, it is interesting that that, that's, that, that was the, the kryptonite that they ended up uh, coming up with to like, uh, but, but we've, seen that, we've seen yeah. that kryptonite. We Homelander, we have been with for going on four seasons. Yeah. We know he's a narcissist. We yeah. have seen him have this, this mental stuff of like, like despising humanity, but also wanting them to love him and all of this yeah. stuff. Like, so, but they finally told you, like, mm -hmm. how, how that came to be. Like, yeah. we got it. We're never going to get a full origin story, but, but you finally feel like you got a little bit, you yeah. got more context for the origin of Homelander. Yeah. Agreed. Agreed. So, so. So it's like last season we're introduced to his biological father. Makes right. sense. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> this week we're introduced to we're, we're like reintroduced to the woman who pretty much served as quasi mother and torturer, and then the 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 other people who who knew what they were doing was wrong and still did it anyway. I mean, they were basically a kid was a lab rat. So yeah. it yeah. it just like they do such a good job to your point about how you are so he is the worst of the worst and yet mm -hmm. at the end of the day the writers have managed to instill this little bit of humanity mm -hmm. in homelander that despite everything you're just like for some reason i want you to stick around yeah <laughs> <laughs> because yeah. I like, I don't know, because he just adds so much tension. Like, I agree. It's a, it's it, everything was so intense and it mm -hmm. was a lot. I just, I just think they could have cut it down mm -hmm. a little bit and mm -hmm. made it a cold open. And that would have had bigger impact than like a whole full, whole like story arc. Mm -hmm. And it's just because like, I'm so invested in figuring out like this, this whole origin story of Homelander and him getting vengeance on his quote unquote bullies yeah. that it kind of reduces me like, Oh, we're back here. I don't care. 
<laughs> like, like uh, this is okay, blah, blah, blah. Next. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and I just, and to go back to the Marty thing, I just, there, there's something about it where I'm just like, uh, you're, you've taken me out of it. Like I was mm. in it, but this is going that extra knot notch up where I'm just like kind of taken out of this whole thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And yeah. And I think, that, uh, I think that was, I think that was intentional. I think that was part of it too. Well, they're, they're always, I mean, there's an yeah. episode called hero gasm. So yeah. yeah. I mean, we, we've yeah. seen we have, some things we've seen yeah. some things, we, but for whatever reason, this is the first time when I was really just like, mm, mm-hmm. I don't know. Your the antics have taken me out, like yeah. like it's just pushed it in a way where for whatever reason I'm just like mm, I don't know I yeah. I'm 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 not in it the way I was during like Frank and in the oven like I yeah. totally understood that but mm-hmm. anyways um we will continue the boys. We'll only have one episode of the boys to talk about next week. Yeah. yeah. And one episode of dragons. And on that note, will, why don't you tell our listeners where they can find you? Yes. You can find me on X formerly known as Twitter at will M Polk W I L L M P O L K. And you can find me there too at SJ Belmont, S J B L M O N T. Please follow our crew on Twitter at Scene and Nerd, friend us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram and threads at Scene underscore N underscore Nerd. And visit our website, www.sceneandnerdpodcast.com. But most importantly, rate, follow, and comment on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, or wherever your podcast. Good night, geek out. You're welcome. Hey.